First appearing 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens today stands as the most impactful and advanced species to walk the Earth. From evolutionary advancement like no other to intelligence that can put a man on the moon, it will surprise you to know that the world's most sophisticated species is nothing more than an amalgamation of their ancestors' best traits and millions of years of evolution. But what does it truly mean to be a Homo sapien? How did our ancestors shape the world today? And what does it truly mean to have humanity in your veins? Known for their unmatched intellectual prowess, the name Homo sapiens quite literally translates to wise man or wise human. Standing as the latest species of the human race, Homo sapiens should not be a foreign concept to us. After all, it's who we are and the species all 8 billion of us belong to. But how did we get here? What makes us who we are today? And what exactly are our origins? To truly understand the origin of our species, we need to first pay homage to those who came before us. See, humans belong to the superfamily Hominoidea, which generally includes all apes. However, the lineage leading to humans began diverging from that of other apes millions of years ago. First splitting from gibbons, then orangutans, and later gorillas, the final split between human ancestors and the ancestors of chimpanzees and bonobos occurred around 8 to 4 million years ago during the late Miocene epoch. A significant genetic event in this period was the fusion of two ancestral chromosomes in humans, resulting in 23 pairs of chromosomes, unlike the 24 pairs in other apes. Following the split from chimpanzees and bonobos, the hominin lineage diversified into several species and genera. Among the New World, the earliest known genera was Australopithecus, which included species like Australopithecus afarensis, who lived between 4 and 2 million years ago and displayed both ape-like and human-like traits. The genus Homo, we believe, evolved from Australopithecans around 2.8 million years ago, with the earliest known fossil being the specimen LD350-1 from Ethiopia. According to mainstream archaeology, early species such as Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis appeared around 2.3 million years ago, characterized by larger brains and more sophisticated tool use. Around 2 million years ago, Homo erectus emerged, becoming the first archaic human to leave Africa and spread across Eurasia. Thanks to evolution, the Homo erectus had a more modern body plan, a larger brain, and a greater capacity for complex toolmaking and the use of fire which significantly impacted their survival and social structures. The Homo sapiens of today evolved in Africa around 300,000 years ago from a species commonly known as either Homo heidelbergensis or Homo rodensiensis, who were descendants of the Homo erectus that remained in Africa. The development of Homo sapiens involved several critical adaptations, most notably cognitive and behavioral modernity and around 160,000 to 70,000 years ago, early Homo sapiens began to exhibit advanced behaviors such as sophisticated language, art, and complex social structures. Today, Homo sapiens can be found in every corner of the Earth and sit at the top of the food chain worldwide. But this fact presents a question. If the species began in Africa, when, why, and how did they spread across the Earth and conquer it? At the very core of the topic, the out-of-Africa migration of Homo sapiens occurred in at least two major waves, shaped by environmental changes, technological advancements, and the quest for new resources. The first wave took place around 130,000 to 100,000 years ago. This initial migration saw early humans moving into the Middle East and parts of Asia, likely driven by changing climate conditions and the search for more hospitable environments. Fossil evidence from Israel's Shkul and Kavze caves, dating back to this period, supports this early movement. It's important to understand that during this period, the Homo sapiens shared the Earth with many different ancient human species, such as Neanderthals, Denisovan, Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and Homo naledi. As such, these early groups that migrated did not establish long-term populations, possibly due to competition with local archaic humans or unfavorable environmental conditions. The second wave, known as the Southern Dispersal, occurred around 70,000 to 50,000 years ago. During this period, Homo sapiens utilized advancements in toolmaking and developed new survival strategies that facilitated their migration. 
This wave of migration followed coastal routes through South Asia and Southeast Asia, eventually reaching Australia about 65,000 years ago. Thankfully, this migration was more successful in establishing lasting populations, as evidenced by widespread archaeological sites and genetic evidence. As mentioned before, as the Homo sapiens expanded out of Africa, they encountered local populations of archaic humans, such as Neanderthals in Europe and Western Asia and Denisovans in Asia. These encounters often led to interbreeding. In fact, genomic studies have revealed that modern humans outside of Africa carry small percentages of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA. According to the study, non-African populations possess approximately 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA while some Melanesian and Southeast Asian populations carry up to 5% Denisovan DNA. Although it might seem irrelevant, this interbreeding and interaction with other hominins were significant in shaping modern human genetics. The genetic contributions of Neanderthals and Denisovans have influenced various aspects of modern human biology, such as immune system responses and adaptation to different climates. So now we understand when they migrated out of Africa and what happened next. However, the next question, and possibly the bigger one, stands as to why they did it in the first place. Well, the reasons for these migrations are quite many, but one of the largest contributors was environmental pressure, such as changing climates, which may have created more favorable conditions for migration during certain periods. Besides that, technological advancements such as improved toolmaking and the use of fire provided early humans with the means to adapt to new environments and exploit new resources. As they say, curiosity killed the cat, but in our case, it forced us to grow. Although it might sound weird, seeing as we are all Homo sapiens, our species is not without its own share of fossils. See, the fossil records for Homo sapiens are a literal gold mine for archaeology, paleobiology, and so many other fields, as they provide an intricate and enlightening narrative of our evolutionary history, showcasing a wide array of significant discoveries. Ironically, unlike every other human species, Homo sapiens did not have a true type specimen. This essentially means there is no specific individual designated as the archetype for the species. To understand why, we have to look no further than when Carl Linnaeus first named our species Homo sapiens in 1758. See, scientists at the time didn't use type specimens, which, by the way, are specific examples meant to represent a species. In 1994, paleontologist Robert Bakker jokingly suggested using the skull of Edward Drinker Cope, a famous paleontologist, as the type specimen. Cope donated his body to science when he died in 1897, and his skull is kept at the University of Pennsylvania. However, for a specimen to be a true type specimen, it must have been examined by the person who first named the species, which means Cope's skull doesn't qualify. Although we don't have a designated type specimen for Homo sapiens, we do have an extensive record of fossils that reveal the world of our ancestors and how we evolved over the millennia. Among these fossils, one of the most influential is the Marba cranium. The fossil records of Homo sapiens provide a fascinating and detailed narrative of our evolutionary history. Each significant discovery sheds light on the physical, cognitive, and cultural development of our species, showcasing a wide array of traits and adaptations that illustrate our journey from archaic hominins to modern humans. Discovered in 1958 near the village of Maba in Guangdong Province, southern China, the Maba cranium consists of a skull cap and parts of the right upper face, including the bones of the nose. The fossil had pronounced brow ridges similar to those of Homo erectus, but indicated a larger brain capacity, although precise measurements are impossible due to the incomplete skull base. Dated to approximately 130,000 years ago, the Marba cranium is classified as an archaic Homo sapien, or an Asian extension of Homo heidelbergensis. This classification was a big deal, as it bridged features between Homo erectus and modern humans, illustrating an important transitional phase in human evolution. Moving to another fossil, the Cro-Magnon remains were discovered in 1868 in a cave at Cro-Magnon near Leezies de Tayac, France. These early Europeans had a robust build, a prominent chin, and a brain capacity of around 1,600 cubic centimeters, which is somewhat larger than the average for modern humans. The Cro-Magnons produced sophisticated tools and remarkable art, dating from around 10,000 
to 45,000 years ago. Essentially, they represent early Homo sapiens in Europe and showcase advanced cognitive and cultural development, including the famous cave paintings of Lascaux and Altamira. See, these artworks, along with decorated tools and weapons, essentially showed us that the Cro-Magnons had developed complex symbolic thought and cultural practices, much like the people of today. Another major fossil was the Steinem skull, found in 1933 along the Mur River near Stuttgart, Germany. The fossil had a cranial capacity of approximately 1,100 cubic centimeters and exhibited a mix of archaic and modern traits, including a long, slightly flattened skull, moderately heavy brow ridges, and a rounded rear portion. Dated to approximately 350,000 years ago, the Steinem skull is classified as either archaic Homo sapiens or Homo heidelbergensis and is extremely important as it gave scientists a wonderful insight into the evolutionary transition in Europe from early hominin to modern humans and the morphological changes that occurred during this period. As you've seen in some of the fossils, a good amount of the Homo sapien fossil record is often lumped with other species, and this isn't surprising, as our species is simply the amalgamation of the best traits of our ancestors, and one of the best ways to see this is in the Solo Man fossils. Discovered in the early 1930s at the Solo River in Ngangdong, Java, the Solo Man fossils consist of 11 skulls and two leg bone fragments, with cranial capacities ranging from 1,150 to 1,300 cubic centimeters, characterized by thick bones and heavy brow ridges. The fossils showed signs of complex social or ritualistic behavior, as their skull bases were broken, suggesting the heads might have been taken as trophies, and the brains eaten. But that wasn't the major concern, as these fossils, possibly dating to the late Pleistocene around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, sparked debate about their classification, as some scholars considered Solo Man a late Homo erectus, specifically the Homo soloensis, while others believe Solo Man is a regional variant of early Homo sapiens. Although many fossils are not attributed to Homo sapiens with 100% accuracy, some are, and among them are the famous Homo fossils. The Omo fossils, discovered in 1967 in the Omo Valley, Ethiopia, include Omo 1 and Omo 2, and show a mix of modern and archaic features. The Omo 1 had a more modern appearance, with a high cranial vault, while the Omo 2 had more robust features. Dated to approximately 195,000 years ago, these fossils are among the earliest known Homo sapiens, and are extremely important, as they reinforce the African origin of our species. But that's not all as these findings have been crucial in understanding the timeline of human evolution and the early spread of modern humans within Africa. When it comes to Homo sapiens fossils, there is an abundant amount of material to study. From the discussed marble cranium in China to the Hofmeyer skull in South Africa, these fossils illuminate the extensive and varied evolutionary journey of Homo sapiens. They reveal a tapestry of physical and cultural adaptations showcasing our species' remarkable ability to thrive in diverse environments and highlighting the intricate history that has shaped today's modern humans. However, fossils can only tell us so much about a species' anatomy. Luckily, this is our species, and our anatomy is no secret, and its history is perhaps the most fascinating to ever exist. When it comes to anatomy, our bodies share many similarities with those of other animals, Yet there are distinctive traits that define us as humans. For instance, our dental formula reflects shorter palates and smaller teeth compared to other primates. Notably, we're gradually losing our third molars, and our crowded teeth often close gaps quickly in young individuals. It's no secret that we share some physical features with chimpanzees, such as the vestigial tail and opposable thumbs. However, humans have evolved barrel-shaped chests for bipedal respiration, setting us apart from all our primate relatives. And despite having a similar density of hair follicles, our velus hair, aka peach fuzz, is mostly invisible, as we boast an impressive two million sweat glands across our bodies for thermoregulation. When it comes to height and weight, each human differs wildly. This is because our average height and weight are influenced by our own genetics and the environment. Humans excel in endurance activities like long distance running, thanks to our efficient sweat glands and our adapted cardiovascular system. This evolutionary trait is no doubt thanks to the species before us, who slowly evolved to become efficient hunters and skilled runners. 
Our species also has a complex skeletal structure of about 206 bones in our adult bodies, providing support, protection, and movement. Our skeleton is divided into two main parts, the axial skeleton, which includes the skull, vertebral column, and ribcage, and the appendicular skeleton, which includes the limbs and their supporting structures. Moving on from the skeleton, we also have 600 muscles in our bodies, which work together with our skeleton to help us move, maintain posture, and generate heat. Our muscles come in three types. Skeletal muscles, which are attached to bones and help us move voluntarily. Smooth muscles, found in our internal organs and blood vessels, controlling involuntary movements like digestion, and cardiac muscles found in the heart, pumping blood throughout our bodies. This blood is oxygenated through a process called respiration, which is essential for providing oxygen to our cells and removing waste products. During this process, we breathe in oxygen through our nose and mouth, which then travels down our trachea or windpipe and into our lungs. Inside our lungs, the oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide, which we then exhale through our nose and mouth. Moving on to our circulatory system, which includes our heart, blood vessels, and blood. Thanks to evolution, we have a very efficient system, as our hearts pump oxygen-rich blood from the lungs to the rest of our body through arteries, and then return oxygen-poor blood back to the lungs through veins. This continuous circulation ensures that oxygen and nutrients are delivered to our cells, and waste products are removed properly. For energy, our digestive system helps us break down food and absorb nutrients. It includes organs like the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, liver, and pancreas. See, after we swallow food, it's broken down into smaller pieces by enzymes and acids in our stomach and intestines, and then absorbed into our bloodstream to be used by our cells. For cognitive activities, we have the nervous system, which controls all of our body's activities by sending electrical signals between our brain, spinal cord, and nerves. It's divided into two main parts, the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes all the nerves that branch out from the spinal cord to the rest of the body. Together, they create a network that allows us to navigate environments and promptly adapt to situations. Finally, our reproductive system allows us to create new life. In males, the reproductive system includes the testes, which produce sperm, and the penis, which delivers sperm to the female reproductive tract. In females, it includes the ovaries, which produce eggs, and the uterus, where a fertilized egg can develop into a baby. In the realm of genetics, our genetic makeup is remarkably similar across individuals, with a 99.5% to 99.9% .9 genetic similarity between any two people. This idea basically means that way back during the late Pleistocene era, there was this period where our human ancestors went through some serious stuff. During this period, environmental factors and geographical events likely played a significant role in shaping human genetic diversity. Essentially, the genetic research has provided compelling evidence of the rich tapestry of human migration and settlement patterns, particularly within African populations. The continent of Africa today is recognized as the cradle of humanity, where our earliest ancestors originated and diversified. Within Africa, Diverse ecosystems and geographical features fostered the development of distinct genetic lineages over millions of years. But crazy enough, not all, as the migratory history of African populations reflects a dynamic interplay of environmental pressures, cultural practices, and technological innovations. From the ancient migrations of hunter-gatherer groups to the spread of agricultural communities, humans have continually adapted to changing landscapes and climates. Ancient Homo sapiens, like their modern counterparts, were adaptable creatures, able to thrive in a variety of environments across the globe. They inhabited diverse habitats ranging from lush forests to arid savannas, from coastal regions to mountainous terrain. Essentially, their ability to adapt to different environments was crucial for their survival and expansion as a species. The population of Homo sapiens fluctuated over time, influenced by factors such as food availability, climate change, and competition with other species. Early Homo sapiens lived in small, nomadic groups, relying on hunting and gathering for sustenance. As they developed more sophisticated tools and techniques, they were able to expand into new territories and increase their population size. By the Upper Paleolithic period, around 50,000 years ago, Homo sapiens had spread across much of the world. 
forming larger and more complex societies, which ultimately led to the 8 billion people with whom we share a family. The ancient Homo sapiens faced significant challenges as they adapted to changing environmental conditions. Throughout their history, they experienced periods of dramatic climate change, shifting from ice ages to warmer interglacial periods. These changes impacted their habitats, food sources, and migration patterns. For example, during glacial periods, vast ice sheets covered much of the Northern Hemisphere, forcing Homo sapiens to migrate south in search of food and shelter. As the climate warmed, they were able to expand into new territories and develop agriculture, leading to the establishment of settled communities. The changing environment also influenced the cultural and technological innovations of ancient Homo sapiens, as they developed specialized tools and techniques for hunting, fishing, and gathering, as well as for building shelters and clothing to protect themselves from the elements. Over time, they learned to harness fire for cooking, warmth, and protection, further enhancing their ability to survive and thrive in diverse environments. Basically, the ancient Homo sapiens were resilient and adaptable beings, who successfully navigated changing environments throughout their history. Their ability to innovate, cooperate, and migrate allowed them to spread across the globe and establish diverse and dynamic societies. But to adapt, they needed food. So what did they eat? Sadly, unlike us, the ancient Homo sapiens did not have McDonald's or cereal, but rather a diverse diet based on the resources available. The diet of ancient Homo sapiens was as diverse as the environments they inhabited, reflecting their hunter-gatherer lifestyle and resourceful adaptation to changing conditions. As nomadic foragers, they traversed varied landscapes, from dense forests to open plains, and their diet evolved in response to the seasonal rhythms of nature. Meat was a cornerstone of their sustenance, with ancient Homo sapiens displaying remarkable hunting prowess in pursuit of a diverse array of game. From mammoths to rabbits, they employed a range of hunting techniques, from coordinated group efforts to individual pursuits with spears and bows. The bounty of the hunt provided not only sustenance, but also essential nutrients like protein, fat, and vitamins, sustaining their physical strength and vitality. Yet their diet extended beyond the hunt, encompassing a rich tapestry of plant foods gathered from the land. Fruits, berries, nuts, roots, and leafy greens were among their botanical bounty, harvested with intimate knowledge of local flora and seasonal availability. This gathering aspect of their diet required keen observation and an intimate understanding of the natural world as ancient Homo sapiens navigated the complexities of their environment. Seasonal variation played a significant role in shaping their dietary habits, with ancient Homo sapiens adapting their food sources to the changing rhythms of the seasons. They moved with the ebb and flow of nature, shifting their focus between hunting and gathering to capitalize on seasonal abundance and ensure a sustainable food supply throughout the year. The advent of fire and cooking marked a pivotal movement in human culinary history, transforming raw ingredients into savory meals that not only satisfied hunger, but also enhanced flavor, texture, and nutritional value. Cooking over an open flame not only made food more palatable, but also helped to neutralize harmful bacteria and parasites, mitigating the risk of foodborne illnesses. But that's not all as social dynamics also influence their diet, with food sharing and cooperation playing a central role in ancient Homo sapiens society. Within their tight-knit communities, individuals shared resources to ensure everyone had enough to eat, fostering bonds of reciprocity and mutual support. Rituals and ceremonies surrounding food likely served as cultural touchstones, reinforcing social cohesion and identity within their tribes. In essence, the diet of ancient Homo sapiens was a testament to their ingenuity, adaptability, and intimate connection to the natural world. As skilled hunter-gatherers, they thrived on a diverse array of foods procured from their surroundings, embodying a harmonious relationship with the land and its bounty. This relationship would ultimately shape their lifestyle, as it fostered a community that not only relied on the land, but also on each other. Ancient Homo sapiens lived dynamic lifestyles that were shaped by their environment, social interactions, and cultural practices. Let's delve into the various aspects of their lifestyle. The need to rely on each other gave birth to something more complex than food, as language played a crucial role in ancient Homo sapiens society, enabling communication, cooperation, 
and the transmission of knowledge and culture across generations. While the specifics of their languages are lost to time, evidence suggests that they developed complex verbal communication systems, likely consisting of spoken language, supplemented by gestures, facial expressions, and possibly early forms of symbolic communication. Over time, this language would evolve and even take the shape of art, as they now left messages for those who would come next. Messages for us. See, artistic expression was a hallmark of ancient Homo sapiens culture, manifesting in a variety of forms, including cave paintings, sculptures, engravings, and decorative objects. These artworks provided insights into their beliefs, experiences, and cultural practices, depicting scenes of daily life, hunting expeditions, ceremonial rituals, and mythical creatures. The intricate craftsmanship and symbolic imagery showcased their creativity, imagination, and spiritual connection to the world around them. The early evidence of art was shell engravings made by Homo erectus 300,000 years before modern humans evolved. However, art attributed to Homo sapiens existed at least 75,000 years ago, with jewelry and drawings found in caves in South Africa. But art isn't only drawing, as evidence of humans engaging in musical activities predates cave art. And so far, music has been practiced by virtually all known human cultures. Homo would also go on to invent writing, with one of the oldest surviving works of literature being the Epic of Gilgamesh, first engraved on ancient Babylonian tablets about 4,000 years ago. See, unlike speaking, reading, and writing, they do not come naturally to humans and must be taught. Nevertheless, literature was present before the invention of words and language. With 30,000-year-old paintings on walls inside some caves, portraying a series of dramatic scenes. Moving on from the arts, the ancient Homo sapiens were adept toolmakers, crafting a diverse array of implements from stone, bone, wood, and other natural materials. These tools served a multitude of purposes, from hunting and gathering to crafting shelter and processing food. Stone tools such as hand axes, scrapers, and spear points were integral to their survival, allowing them to manipulate their environment and exploit available resources with precision and efficiency. Over time, these tools advanced beyond our wildest imaginations and soon grew enough to where our species has made the world a technological hub designed for our survival. Besides technology, clothing played a vital role in protecting ancient Homo sapiens from the elements, regulating body temperature, and providing camouflage for hunting and gathering activities. While the specifics of their attire varied depending on climate and cultural practices, evidence suggests that they crafted garments from animal hides, plant fibers, and other materials. Additionally, some researchers speculate that ancient Homo sapiens may have utilized natural substances, such as aromatic plants or minerals, as rudimentary forms of deodorant to mask body odors and deter pests. Essentially, they were not so different from their modern counterparts. Unlike no other animal in the world, the ancient Homo sapiens exhibited complex belief systems and spiritual practices encompassing animistic beliefs, ancestor worship, and reverence for natural forces and phenomena. Rituals, ceremonies, and communal gatherings played a central role in their religious observances, fostering social cohesion and reinforcing cultural identity. Today, artifacts such as burial sites, ceremonial objects, and symbolic artifacts provide archaeological evidence of their spiritual beliefs and practices. This belief in a religion would go on to shape the world and its values. It would also go on to shape customs, both big and small, especially customs like burials. See, burial customs varied among ancient Homo sapiens communities, reflecting cultural diversity and regional traditions. Archaeological evidence indicates that they practiced elaborate burial rituals, interring the deceased with grave goods, offerings, and symbolic artifacts. Besides that, burial sites often served as communal gathering places and sacred spaces, where rituals of mourning, remembrance, and reverence were conducted to honor the departed and ensure their transition to the afterlife. Ancient Homo sapiens lived in diverse habitats, ranging from coastal plains and river valleys to mountainous regions and grasslands. They established temporary campsites, seasonal settlements, and more permanent dwellings, depending on their subsistence strategies and mobility patterns. Evidence of their settlements, including hearths, tool assemblages, and architectural remains, provide insights into their social organization, technological innovations, and adaptive strategies for survival.
They show us today that the lifestyle of ancient Homo sapiens was characterized by innovation, creativity, and resilience as they navigated the challenges and opportunities of their ever-changing world. Their cultural legacy continues to resonate today, offering valuable lessons about human adaptation, cooperation, and the enduring power of creativity and expression. But perhaps the strongest feat of our ancestors was the ability to make a better tomorrow, a trait we still hold on to today, as we pass the torch onto the next generation. But what do you think about the Homo sapiens species? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why not hit the like and subscribe button to learn more about the past. Until next time, bye.